Hey there! As you might know, I really love Pokemon. I've been playing Pokemon since Red first came out. Am I dating myself? I haven't missed a single generation and I'm always excited when a new game comes out. Recently, I made a Basque Legion from Pokemon Arceus, which I loved by the way, and I've been really looking forward to Violet and Scarlet coming out. When I saw Little Gimme Ghoul, I couldn't resist. I knew I had to make one. While his roaming form is super cute, I really wanted to make his chest. In order to make this chest hollow, I had to create some forms from tinfoil to keep it from collapsing in the oven. The clay tends to get a little soft in the oven before it hardens, so without a form, there's always a slight risk of collapse or distortion. Although tinfoil is awesome, it's not smooth. And although I try to make sure I pop all the tiny bubbles in the clay, I don't get them all, so it's sanding time. Sanding forever. In order to make sure the big medallion on his chest N not the anatomical chest, but the location slash object chest, I traced it onto paper, flipped it graphite side down on the clay, gave it a little roll, and then cut out on the lines. Thinking about it though, maybe this chest is anatomical? Who knows when it comes to Pokemon? To make the raised edges on the chest, I pulled out my nifty thickness guides. I made these a long time ago. A lot of clay slash metal clay artists use playing cards in stacks to roll out clay to exact thicknesses. I could get a pasta machine, but honestly there's just not a lot of room in my workspace. Playing cards are a little boring though, so I grabbed some of my favorite cheap magic cards. I love collecting them for the art less for playing because I'm really bad at playing, and I made rolling guides from them. While that was baking, I started playing around creating coins. I was planning on making every single coin in his chest have the actual coin design, but after doing just one and seeing that it was a little big, I decided to make just a few for texture and have the majority be plain coins. I used a small brass tube as a cookie cutter and made a whole bunch. It was really satisfying. While the coins were baking, I started working on his actual body, including his anatomical chest. Or at least the part that looks like an organic body, even though maybe the chest is organic too? Don't think too hard about Pokemon, it doesn't end well. Although some artists make really cool renditions of realistic Pokemon if you're into that sort of thing. 
To make his head, I used a bead rolling technique. This technique is super cool when you have multiple colors. It swirls them together in a really clean way and looks awesome. With just the gray clay, it's perfect to make his head shape. Now that the coins are done, let's fill the bottom of the chest with tinfoil and clay so we don't actually have to make 999 coins. adding his little body and I didn't measure. Let's do it again, but smaller. The queen of no planning strikes again. Okay, new and improved smaller body, now with dowsing antenna and eyes. Let's surround him with his favorite shinies. He's cute, but how's he gonna grab his coins? Time to make him some arms. Way too long noodly arms. We'll just keep cutting them down until they look like they belong to him. Spoiler alert, it took me way longer than it should have, and I got progressively more out of shot as my concentration increased, so not a lot of footage. We're almost there! Now for his chest strap hinge, maybe tail thing? Looking at the designs, the strap is the only thing holding the chest together, and he can use it to open and close like a little clam. I opted to switch materials and use warbler for this part, hoping that it would be strong enough to support the lid. Even if this wasn't exactly the way I wanted the lid to sit, I had way too much fun at this point just boinging it. Okay, for real this time. The great thing about Warbler is that you can just reheat it and reposition. Still boings! Excellent! Time to apply the medallion so you don't see the end of the strap anymore. I also ended up adding a little more warbler to the strap right where it bends backwards. I love the boing, but I was worried about the structural integrity. Another great thing about warbler, it's sticky when it's warm, so it's really easy to add more to it. Paint time! Well, prime time! Well, fix brush time. Then prime time. I also primed all of the coins and metallic parts black. I feel like that gives the best metallic look at the end, even though you can still sometimes see brush strokes. We might not know what his shiny version looks like, but now we know what his shadow version might look like. It's kind of cool. Painting time! I did a tiny amount of planning on this one. 
I'm going to try to work from the inside out to minimize the potential mess ups. Speaking of mess ups, I'm still learning this camera. This was my first full project with it, and I'm realizing that I can't really rely on autofocus. I probably should have known that, but oh well. I'm going to start practicing manual focusing for the next one. I have lots of lovely footage of my knuckles instead of the actual project, so that's why this video is a little bit shorter. One more example of knuckles and focus problems. For his body, I mixed up some cold gray and cobalt blue. Later I'll mix it up again and add just a little pearl blue for a sparkle. This first layer was so streaky. I always see the brush strokes with this paint, even with the acrylic mediums and additives. Red time! I did some tests to see which red would show up best and look the closest, and Carmine Red won the battle. I did a few layers of this too since the opacity wasn't exactly what I'd call opaque. It's so shiny! Some of you helped me out, thank you so much, and suggested some matte additives. So I grabbed the Liquitex and Blix brand, but no luck so far. What did work was the suggestion to get a matte varnish and put that on top when I'm done painting. Matte Mod Podge to the rescue. Gold time! We are so close to done! I always get a mix of excitement and complete loss of interest at this point. I guess because the hard part is done and there's no real last minute planning to do, my brain just goes, next! And I start a new project and I have to really push myself to finish. Just a dot of eye gloss, and it's time to get some fancy photos. I'm super excited to get the new games, and hopefully by the time this video comes out, I will have one! Anyway, that's it for this video. If you're playing the new Pokemon games, please let me know which new Pokemon is your favorite! There are so many cute new ones, I'm sure I'm going to have a hard time choosing. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one!